3D printing is extremely expensive, right? Well, it might actually be a lot more affordable than you think. I recently picked up this 3D printer on Amazon for $69. So I know what you're probably thinking. There's no way a $69 3D printer can be any good at all. You could get an entire 3D printer for less than the cost of this rod. Linus recently made a video on how bad is a $95 3D printer. So in this video, we're gonna see how bad is a $69 3D printer. After reading some very encouraging reviews, I knew I made the right decision in purchasing this 3D printer. So here's how it looks right out of the box. It comes with everything you need and more. It comes with some sample filament, a spool holder, a power supply, some extra tools, a USB cable, and even a USB adapter. It's extremely easy to set up the physical machine. All you have to do is screw in eight screws and plug in two wire connectors. The first negative with this machine is it doesn't actually hold a normal spool of filament. It has this very weak spool holder. This machine is not very intuitive at first, but once you get used to it, it's actually very easy to use. The machine itself is actually not too loud. Here's how it sounds. And overall, the build quality is fairly decent. It's just a bunch of injection molded parts. It's ironically less flimsy than my Subaru Outback. The first thing that I 3D printed was a bed leveling file. It's basically just a flat, simple X that you could print on your build plate. This file makes it very easy to see if your bed is level. If you want to download this file, just go to my website, 3dprinteracademy.com and search for bed leveling. Now the first real thing that everyone should 3D print is Benchy, the universal 3D printer benchmark. You can see already that the print quality is decent. So I did also get this camera to monitor my 3D prints while I'm out and about. This is a Wise Cam, and I got this camera because I needed some way of monitoring my 3D prints, and this one is inexpensive, and I follow one of the Wise Cam founders on YouTube. Here's the final result of the benchmark. It looks fine, not the best quality, but I think this is because of the cheap filament that they give you in the box. For the next test, I decided to print a gear with some filament that I know is decent. Here it is again on the Wise Cam. As you can see, I had no issue with bed adhesion at all, even despite it not having a heated bed. I did apply some glue from a glue stick before the print. So here's the final result of the gear. I think it came out a lot better than Benchy. And it seems fine. It seems like the tolerances are close enough for 3D printing. So overall, how would I rate this 3D printer? The build quality is decent and it was extremely easy to set up. Just having the four buttons on the front is a little bit confusing and there is no on and off switch. Also, this printer is not listed inside of Cura, so if you're slicing your own things, you'll have to use a custom printer profile. So overall, I'll give this 3D printer a 7.5 out of 10. In terms of price, it's definitely the cheapest 3D printer available. It's also nice having a 3D printer that could fit on your desk, something that's not too big. Here's its size compared to the Creality CR10. It literally fits on the build plate with room to spare. So for what it is and for its really inexpensive price point, it's actually a great little 3D printer. So how bad is a $69 3D printer? Well, not that bad.